Hi, it's Steve Hargadon, and we're in day two of the Global Education Conference. Tara Hoffman is, is it Tara or Tara? It's Tara, right? Tara, yes, yes. Tara Hoffman is our keynote speaker this hour. We're really delighted to have her with us. Tara Boyce Hoffman has worked for AFS for more than 30 years, both in the U.S. and abroad. She currently leads AFS USA as president and CEO. Prior to her appointment in November of 2018, she served as the Chief Operating and Organizational Development Officer for AFS USA, where she was responsible for the development and implementation of the organization's strategic plan that focused on bringing innovative new programs and technologies to the organization. She joined AFS USA in 2009. So the reason I wanted to do this introduction is that I was an AFS exchange student in Brazil for a year, and I count it as one of the most important things that I've ever done in my life. So thanks, Tara, and thanks for being here today. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, I'm just thrilled to be here. I've been following the GEC for quite a few years, and I'm really honored um, to be a keynote today. And I'm really honored and humbled by having participated in so many sessions already and plan to make the most of the whole week and really seeing so many wonderful things going on around the world. It's just very exciting. So I'm going to get started right into um, a, a keynote talk, and then I hope we will have time at the end to take some questions via the chat. As fellow supporters of global education, you probably know the name AFS. We are the oldest and largest organization of its kind in the world, and in the 1900s, our organization's founders launched a new idea that by exchanging young people between countries, we could be far more effective in achieving a more just and peaceful world. From where and how did they get this revolutionary idea that well into the 21st century would change lives, inspire hundreds of study abroad organizations, spark an industry around global youth and classroom travel, all with a common goal of bringing people together to celebrate their differences and work towards a better world? The founders of AFS, then known as the American Field Service, were volunteer ambulance drivers during the First and Second World Wars, serving the wounded on both sides of the battlefield. After returning from the Second World War, these volunteers were forever changed by their experiences with those soldiers, and especially from their interaction young across the lines. They learned that the very simple act of meeting these enemies had transformed everything they had been told about, quote unquote, the other side. In response, the volunteer ambulance drivers of the American Field Service began circulating amongst themselves a revolutionary idea, a plan to introduce US teenagers to their counterparts in Germany and France and Japan and vice versa. They believed very strongly that the horrors that they had witnessed in Europe and South Asia and Northern Africa could be avoided through the simple act of these exchanges of young people and their cultures, their ideals, their values, their common hopes and dreams. And in 1947, their idea became a reality and the first American Field Service exchange students traveled between the United States, France, Germany, and the Czech Republic. Today, the work that you and I do in facilitating and promoting global education is just as important as it was in 1947, if not more. Each of us recognizes how critical our efforts are in shaping the global citizens of tomorrow. We also know that the experiences we facilitate are pivotal moments in the lives of our students. For all of the efforts with which each of you is engaged, I offer my sincere thanks. I would like to turn our attention for a moment to three buzzwords or buzz phrases that I keep learning about and hearing upon my visits to US high schools and events for educators around the United States. Choice, growth mindset, and intention. Each of these can and should be applied to global education and in training for global competence. Let's start with choice. We are in an interesting time in history, and our choices make all of the difference in how we are perceived, how we interact with others, and when or if we believe that we see what we see and hear. In the school context, young people have choices about their classes, their intended majors, their social groups, and much more. 
for us, influencing the choices that lead to engaging with exchange students, choosing to study abroad, choosing to start an international club, or choosing to pursue passions within that small geographic area is critical. Then there's the concept of growth versus fixed mindsets. Every day we learn more about the brain and how it works in human development, social interactions, and academic study. As such, it behooves us to think about the language that we choose to use with others around us, especially when it comes to students. We as the adults can choose to engage in remarking about potential and opportunity, or we can choose to comment on our own personal struggles and insinuate that our children will follow in those footsteps or that they will remain in the circle or struggle that they currently face. Perseverance and risk-taking to expand what we once thought we were capable of and to learn to push beyond that moves us towards a growth mindset. Focusing on that opens up a world of possibilities for all involved because it eliminates and perceived barriers to success. The third buzzword is intention. In rural communities, where diversity has been treated as a negative, students, teachers, and school leaders have to be intentional about the messages and choices being made to ensure that diversity is looked upon as a positive and that inclusivity is 100% a part of the climate and culture. Hosting exchange students and sending students on study abroad programs are critical to having peer-to-peer -peer interactions on topics that they are interested in and want to talk about. Just this past weekend, I had the opportunity to talk with a group of educators working toward bringing global education to their schools, and not just the social studies classrooms or the French class. We talked about ways that we weave global education into maths and sciences, even physical education. In doing our part, we at AFS USA have launched training events to educators here in the US through which we provide them with the knowledge needed to make the case for school-wide global competency, how to establish global competency goals for their classrooms or for their schools, and resources and programs that enhance classroom discussions, spark civic engagement, and facilitate intercultural learning opportunities. As the new president of AFS USA, it is part of my goal not only of, as a leader of an organization like AFS, but also as a citizen of a troubled planet to ensure that you and I continue and accelerate our efforts to shape the global citizens and global leaders of tomorrow. I often tell a story that shows how the smallest of efforts around global education can lead to a rather significant impact on students, communities, and the world. I won't tell the entire story, but I want to share a quote from an email I received from the American host mother of an AFS high school student from Egypt named Youssef. He arrived in his host community in Ohio and was painfully shy to the point that some were skeptical as to whether he would make it through his year. But once he got himself adjusted, he learned to play the violin, he joined the orchestra, he played football, he was featured on a TV program with his coach and other players from the team. He was active in so many different activities, from pep rally star to skiing. His host family adored him, as did the entire school. In recounting the story of Youssef to us, his host mom wrote, quote, this amazing kid promotes world peace without even trying, unquote. What this tells us is that something as simple as a school and a family hosting an exchange student can oftentimes achieve monumental results. And so, as I mentioned earlier, I, as a citizen of the world, appreciate your efforts in achieving similarly extraordinary results through your own efforts. Here in the United States, the US Department of Education's international strategy about its commitment to succeed globally through international education and engagement. They've stated, and I quote, today more than ever, our students need to be equipped with the critical thinking, communications, socio-emotional and language skills to work collaboratively with their counterparts in the United States and all over the world. Understanding and appreciating other parts of the world 
different religions, cultures, and points of view are essential elements of global and cultural competence. That statement is a call to action for all of us. Sometimes as global educators, it seems overwhelming to think that we can make an impact on our students, our schools, and our communities. Many of our countries are facing unprecedented challenges and an unstable political climate, making our success seem like a mere drop in the bucket. Rather than becoming overwhelmed by the challenges, we need to be diligent and we need to stay engaged with others dedicated to global education, while also introducing its importance to colleagues who've not yet considered it as a possible addition to the curriculum, or for many, don't quite know what we mean by global competence. Another way to help a school achieve global competency, and my personal favorite, of course, is by welcoming exchange students into your high schools. Simply having an international exchange student in a class may expose ideas to your students that they may not otherwise be able to access in person. One exchange student's diverse perspective may serve as a catalyst for engaging with other cultures in the classroom. Ryan Hamilton, a social studies teacher from Tillamook High School in Tillamook, Oregon, and his students underwent a transformative experience as a result of welcoming an exchange student to their classroom. Through the exchange program, Ryan described how students were in the unique position to engage with other cultures. What kind of cultural engagement can teachers expect? Ryan says, quote, consider the impact of studying world religions with students from Pakistan and Turkey present in your classroom. Imagine conversations in the current affairs class when discussing the Middle Eastern conflicts with a student from the Gaza Strip among your students. By welcoming culturally diverse students, Ryan has witnessed cultural engagement like this occur in his own classroom. To help integrate these students and to help foster these types of discussions, we must make sure that teachers are equipped to create an environment that promotes respect and understanding of other cultures before welcoming an international student. Intercultural training opportunities prove valuable in showing teachers how to best incorporate diversity and cultural competence into lesson plans. If teachers are prepared to create a classroom that fosters healthy discussion with diverse perspectives, their lesson plans will better guide students through intriguing concepts that give them a more balanced understanding of the world. Schools can make the most of this opportunity by helping their educators see how they can integrate the perspective of the visiting students into lessons that prompt students to apply a global mindset. For example, inspire students to think about the world beyond their current environment by discussing how different countries respond to current world events. Science teachers can use their classroom for intercultural discussions by having students examine the threats posed by climate change through the lens of different countries. Literature teachers could assign novels similar in theme by authors around the world and find differences and similarities. History teachers could lead discussions on the US civil rights movement and how it relates to modern day human rights efforts around the globe. Engaging lesson plans about real time issues affecting the global community gets students excited to explore different cultures and broaden their global mindset without having to leave their classrooms. Depending on the demographic makeup of your school, an exchange student may expose students to a different culture for the first time. They'll learn the values, attitudes, and customs of another culture and sim simultaneously nurture their intercultural communication skills by collaborating with their diverse classmates. Considering the global business marketplace, your students' early exposure to and practice with intercultural collaboration can give them a competitive advantage upon graduation. Give students an even more competitive edge by letting them explore different cultures in a less restricted setting in an after school activities or program. Encourage debate clubs to explore various dimensions of globally controversial issues like freedom of religion or government censorship. 
By discussing and forming opinions around global issues, students practice recognizing their own and others' perspectives, a key component of building globally competent citizens. Project-based learning also offers an opportunity for students to increase their global competency skills. Work with your exchange students to learn about an issue or a problem that they face in their home country, such as increasing participation in local elections or improving access to education in disenfranchised areas of the country. Whatever the topic, an international student could show domestic students an unfamiliar challenge and help stimulate discussion on past solutions and future ideas. The key to this type of exercise is ensuring students effectively communicate their ideas across cultures in a sensitive and mindful way. Through these exercises, students develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills required for future professions and global citizenship. When an exchange student arrives at your school, you can expect them to learn a great deal from living in your country. By setting an agenda to stimulate global consciousness in the classroom and beyond, you can expect your school to have just as fruitful an experience. There are so many ways to give our youth the opportunities to become more globally aware, both at home and abroad. When we think of exchange students, we are generally referring to students spending a semester or year in a host school. But at AFS, we found that even short one or two week programs can serve as a significant catalyst for further interest in global citizenship and return to unexpected learnings as noted through these quotes from participants on our very short global prep programs. Quote, this student has taught me so this trip has taught me so much about who I want to be. You're surrounded by these inspiring adults and teenagers, and you all go through this amazing experience and grow together. This trip gave me a platform to firsthand see the issues our planet faces, from education to poverty to human trafficking. I got to learn and work towards making a difference, unquote. And another, Quote, this experience has opened my eyes to so many possibilities and really showed me how much potential I have to work towards making a difference and learning all I can about this vast world we live in, unquote. As I mentioned earlier, I am grateful to all of the educators, organizations, and service providers in all corners of the earth for the work that they are doing to provide our youth with the necessary knowledge and skills to become productive global citizens. Here at AFS, we provide all educators with free tools that include lesson plans and more. I invite you to visit our resources at afsusa.org slash educators. Whether you're looking to help a student find opportunities to have an international experience or two-week programs built around the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, I invite you to contact me at president at afsusa.org. I would also like to hear from you if you're interested in having our trainers visit your school to provide education sessions and potentially professional development on global competence or to organize an educational experience abroad with your students, either for sending or hosting an exchange student. In other words, let us all work together to prepare our youth in building a more just and peaceful world. Thank you all for you, what you do. So Steve, I thought um, if participants had questions or we could start a bit of a dialogue about how exchange students can really stimulate this global consciousness in the classroom, I'm happy to field some questions. Okay, so you can put a question in the chat or you can click on the q and A. I'm not sure what that's like from the participant side, but if you figure it out, you can also ask a question that way. especially if we might have any educators on the line who um, have firsthand experience with uh, AFS exchange students or exchange students in general in your school or classroom.
So some questions I'm seeing, can your trainers visit schools all over the US? We operate across the US. We have 84 volunteer teams. AFS is a volunteer organization. Um, we are in many, many parts of the US. Please contact us to, to let us know where you are and we'll see how we could hook up with you. What technology support do you offer for students, parents, for communication and safety? Um, safety is a key issue uh, for and concern of our parents and AFS takes this very seriously worldwide. At AFS USA, when participants apply to go abroad, um, they are connected through a digital platform where we provide information and ongoing communication to our parents throughout their experience because just as students are having their own intercultural experience, natural parents, as we call them, are also having the experience of their child being abroad and often need support. So AFS does um, take very strongly the the importance uh, of reaching out and being a support mechanism to both students host families, as well as sending parents. Yes, we can send links. Um, I'm going to ask one of my staff, Melvin, if he could be just putting in the chat some of the links. And in particular, our educator page provides a lot of resources for teachers, um, as well as um, additional pages reflecting our program opportunities for hosting and sending. So Tara, why don't you explain again what kind of comment you were, ho you were hoping to get at this point? Well, you were really putting so much emphasis on AFS being a contributor to the global competency movement in the U.S. and that we provide this opportunity with exchange students hosted in the U.S. and also American students going abroad and then coming back, um, that how to engage those students in the classroom, especially when we know that so many classrooms in the U.S. are very diverse. And um, we are working and and striving to provide more resources to educators that they can see how they can bring that global competency dialogue alive in conjunction with their regular curriculum, but how to take advantage of these international students and their perspectives to add to the content. Some of which you described in the keynote. Right. right? Um, I'm thinking of programs that bring uh, teachers over to the United States through the State Department program and the ways in which they encourage those teachers to create events around their culture. So um, I'm guessing they're very similar kinds of things that can happen mm -hmm. with students, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And I'm just seeing in the chat one of the comments from Luca. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I am an AFS volunteer in Brazil and I could see how having an exchange student in a rural community can make all the difference and open people's minds. If anybody wa was able to cite a, a, an example of that, that would be great. So I'm, I'm a long ago alum, right? <laughs> so I have no idea kind of what the current circumstance is with students. But given the technology capabilities, are the exchange students getting a chance to talk with each other about the things that they're experiencing? Are yes, and, and we, um, you know, throughout our volunteer base across the country, we do provide orientation and, and often people think of orientation as just before you start. Our orientation and learning experience goes on throughout the whole year. We actually have a learning journey that we work with the students that's throughout um, their experience. They're taking in information, how they're digesting it, how they're starting to define their own views, global views, um, and stepping out of their shoes to even look at their own culture in a different way. It's not just about learning about the culture you're immersed in, but having the opportunity to reflect on your own home culture. So our approach to support and dialogue and reflection is a critical component of our program base. Um, and we do that also with our host families uh, as well as, as the year goes on or the semester goes on. 
So again, I, you know, it's so funny, I think, could you do the same kind of thing we're doing with this conference for all of the current uh, AFSers? Meaning, could they all gather virtually one day and share stories, ways that they show their culture, you know, have some counseling, have some presentations from you about getting past the first three months that, you know, I think you've just given us a great idea, Steve. I know. I love it. <laughs> it's so fun. And you could even bring in alums. Absolutely. So you, could have alums, you, know, you could have alums talk about uh, things that they did where they really felt like they, they had an impact on their local community because they did some event around their culture or they did, they gave a talk or something like that. Right. You know, we're full of good ideas here. It's the implementation, right? It's always the implementation. So Fran from Australia has just given us a great example. In Australia, we've had schools and rural communities reach out to us to ask to host a student in their school as their students are, have very limited exposure to diversity. They are trying to prepare them for when they go away to university and will be surrounded by diversity and are often ill-equipped to interact. Exactly, perfect example and very relevant in the United States as well. So I think, Steve, really our, our key message here is that we encourage educators and people who want to get involved as a volunteer um, working towards global competency. AFS has many opportunities for students, for teachers, for individuals, for people who went on an international intercultural program abroad, not exclusively AFS. There's lots of opportunities to become engaged and um, in particular with so many challenges in the US, um, the importance of this we feel is paramount to really be active, be visible, make Im an impact in local communities, in the school, but also in, with other organizations, like-minded organizations working to achieve similar missions in local communities. There is something brilliant, Tara, about the original mandate and what you do, right? Because as we've talked about in a previous session, there's this incredible abundance of information. The internet has opened up the world in the way that maybe the printing press did previously. You have people who live in very different cultures who live under very different narratives. And so just the core idea of letting people connect with each other without necessarily trying to determine the outcome or to have an agenda, the, the connection is the agenda, that's brilliant. And I think in part the reason that I would think so is because I think that's also the mission of this conference, mm -hmm. which is we don't have to tell you what to think or how to think. We just know that if you get together with each other, good things happen. That's right. And we always say when we have these AFS gatherings of alumni and whether they went two years ago or 20 years ago or 40 years ago, there's this immediate connection. And as you described in the beginning, the impact that an exchange had on your life, AFS or many other organizations striving um, to do this as well, it really has a lasting, a lasting impact. And our goal is really looking in the long term not just the immediate benefit of um, doing something for the summer. It's really about changing lives and being an educational opportunity to do that. So you did get another question in the chat. Mm -hmm. Stuart says, what do you think is the key success factor for AFS over other entities that offer a similar service? So I think uh, the key to our success is that we have remained a volunteer-based organization. Um, there are still one or two others doing this, but uh, the landscape has become smaller. There are many uh, profit-making entities, and I'm, I'm sure they, what they're trying to do has a certain value, but we focus on this as a volunteer platform. So. Yes, there's so many benefits to the students, but we have over 5,000 volunteers in the United States. 
working um, for AFS in many, many different roles in local communities, in schools, as host families, as liaisons to students, as community service project leaders. And I think the key to our success is we've stayed very true to our mission. And sometimes that's been difficult as an organization facing different forms of competitors, um, profit-making competitors that have um, more resources or different offerings or incentives. But I think we, um, we see that our mission still resonates. And yes, we need to evolve as an organization, all organizations need to, but that is really a, a major differentiator is our volunteers and you know the the original founders of the organization and their their vision and we often find when we're talking with ho potential host families that what does help make um, the final decision a positive one is when they learn about the history of the organization and what the ambulance drivers uh, went through and and the vision and all that they enabled um, to, to take on and AFS operates in over 55 countries around the world, over 35,000 volunteers worldwide. Um, it is very much a movement and um, we're all very proud of the work that we do and that it is often, as I talked about in my keynote, as simple as when a student like Youssef comes and he becomes engaged in his school and he really is spreading world peace and intercultural understanding. So I'm laughing, Tara. I wonder what I spread in Brazil. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope it was good. Um, but, you know, again, one of the other interesting pieces of here, here that we talked about yesterday when we talked about gap years mm -hmm. was understanding the value in life of difficult situations, mm -hmm. of experiencing something unknown, and the willingness to voluntarily enter into something that you know has the potential to be hard. Right. And that's just such a great thing. I mean, I, you know, uh, I, I think for me, I mean, I can remember some of the, the things that meant the most to me were the, were the struggles. Right. We have actually a philosophy as, as the backbone of a lot of our orientation and the student journey that I talked about, and that there's value of crisis in learning. And that's where our volunteers really come into play so importantly that the students and the host families and the natural parents who have sent their kids abroad have support from volunteers. They have contacts, they have opportunities to come to gatherings and orientations to talk about what they're going through and they're not alone. Um, and I will also say that often the challenge may not be experienced while they're on program, but for many people, the continuum of learning goes on a whole lifetime. And so the learning journey um, of what we call the unfinished product. So it may take some individuals 10 years after they get back home that they really take in and absorb what this experience did for them and the impact their lives. And some people it happened sooner, but this whole element of reflecting and continually reflecting and providing opportunities for alumni to be engaged as volunteers also provides ongoing reflection. In Uganda, many university medical students yawn, yearn to engage in such programs as volunteers for capacity building. Right. I'm sure. Okay, that was terrific, Tara. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think we can put the slide back. Oh, it's up. Um, feel free to reach out. We'll point you in the right direction. We have lots of opportunities for volunteering, for hosting, for teachers, for students going abroad. And um, come join us on this journey to, to foster global competency in the classroom. And thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.